There's a pecking order on Parliament Hill. MPs take the green shuttle bus. Cabinet ministers get the prestige of a car and driver. Even junior ministers with fewer responsibilities. How do you like the driver and car? Very good. Is it good to have that? It is convenient. Seniors Minister Alice Wong takes the chauffeured limo from her office to the Commons a five-minute walk. But this perk comes with a hefty price tag. The drivers stand around a lot and they make loads of overtime. Some almost double their salary of $47,000. So they don't sleep in the cars? A CTV investigation shows in one year the drivers racked up at least $600,000 in overtime with payouts averaging $20,000. Seven ministers refused to release their drivers overtime, claiming it was privileged information. The whole government's on a bit of an ego trip here, and they like to have their cars running and make them look like big shots, but uh, taxpayers are paying for it. Any other questions? Public Works Minister Rana Ambrose kept her driver so busy, he claimed over 1,000 hours, billing taxpayers 40,000. Human Resources Minister Diane Finley's driver pocketed almost 38000 Bev Oda's driver ran up almost $23,000 in overtime. And Tony Clement, the man now in charge of spending cuts, had his driver on standby for 6,500 hours, or more than 360 days. Total cost to taxpayers, nearly 20000 Ministers work long hours. And uh, frequently, drivers have to work the, uh, the hours that the minister is working because they have to be on standby. Mr. Clement needs to explain to taxpayers once again why he should be trusted with ensuring belt tightening. The two opposition leaders get cars too, but Bob Ray usually hops a ride with a staffer. You don't even use it? I do sometimes, yeah, but not religiously. Former sports minister Gary Lund was the only minister who refused a driver. He told CTV he preferred to walk from his office to the House of Commons. Lisa. Very admirable, Bob. But let's go back to Tony Clement's driver on call 360 days a year. Is there no way around these exorbitant costs except walking? Now, Lisa, Tony Clement is asking himself that very question tonight, and the answer may be found at the cabinet table. Peter McKay and Associate Defence Minister Julian Fantino are the only ministers whose drivers did not claim any overtime. That's because they declared them exempt staff, so they couldn't claim OT. Now, they had to pay them a little more in salary, but at least they're not claiming twenty dollars to $40,000 in overtime. And I put that question to Clement today, and he said it's an idea worth considering, and he admitted that OT for limo drivers is sending the wrong message when the government is preaching restraint and firing civil servants. It's a lot of overtime, Bob. Thanks for this interesting story tonight from Ottawa. And if you go to our website, there is a breakdown of the overtime clocked by the drivers.